5 starts now. Find more votes. A leaked phone call showed President Trump demanding Georgia's top election official overturn that state's results. Now at 5 o'clock, here's a tape and find out how some lawmakers are responding. But first, the Mid-South continuing to get shots to health care workers, how the doses are being doled out today. Morning, everyone. It's 5 o'clock. It is a Monday morning, January 4th. I'm Andrew Douglas. I'm Kim Clark in for Joy this morning. Brittany Bryant and Jadine Gordon have your first alert, weather and traffic. Starting things off with Brittany. Morning. Good morning, Kim and Andrew is being rolled out across the country as the pandemic's death toll climbs. According to NBC News, COVID-19 deaths topped 350,000 yesterday. As of now, the U.S. has more than 20 million confirmed coronavirus cases. And this is all happening as millions of vaccines are being administered. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention said as of Saturday, more than 4 million initial doses have been doled out. Well, today, Mississippi prepares to vaccinate more health care workers as hospitalizations were at an all-time high in that state last week. WMC Action News 5's Camille Connor is live with more on how the state plans to administer vaccination to the people on the front lines. Camille? Good morning, Kim. Starting today, healthcare workers who have not... WMCActionNews5.com. Reporting live, Camille Connor, back to you. In Shelby County, the health department says there are no appointments available right now to get a vaccine, but the health department will continue to vaccinate first responders, healthcare workers, funeral home and mortuary workers, as well as people over the age of 75. Now, the department says... It will release more details about when appointments will be made available in the coming days. And Tennessee teachers have been moved up in the priority list to get the COVID vaccine. But when that happens depends on which county they live in. Catherine Vaughn has been teaching hybrid lessons in Tipton County since school returned in the fall. On the last day of 2020, she and her fellow educators got an email saying they could set up their appointment for the vaccine as soon as January 2nd. But when she'll be receiving the shot remains up in the air. She says while the time frame is still not clear, she's glad things are moving in the right direction. Vaccines are especially important for teachers that have been teaching in person and hybrid, such as myself. I've been working in person doing hybrid instruction since the beginning of August. And this vaccine is hope for us, but we also must remain vigilant and continue to follow the protocols established by the CDC. With Shelby County still under phase 1A1, the health department says it's hard to predict when they will move on to the next phase, 1A2, which will then be followed by phase 1B for teachers. The vaccine is optional for everyone as of now. Yesterday, Mid-South Congressman Steve Cohen joined the list of COVID-19 vaccine recipients. Congressman Cohen got his shot on camera in an effort to boost confidence in the vaccine. On Twitter, he said he knows vaccines work and that he trusts the science behind them. Cohen represents the t t represents Tennessee's ninth district, which includes Shelby County. Vaccine rollout has begun and who gets the shot depends on where you live. We have a detailed breakdown of the COVID vaccine priority list in all three Mid-South states. You can find that along with the latest coronavirus coverage on our website, WMCActionNews5.com. Click on the coronavirus tab at the top of our homepage. Well, we're on the lookout for a reaction this morning from the White House after President Trump's brazen bid to pressure the Georgia Secretary of State to, as he put it, find more votes to change the state's election results. Tracy Potts has that recorded phone call that everyone's talking about this morning. NBC News obtained this recording of President Trump calling Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffin. A pair of explosions shake two Pittsburgh neighborhoods when investigators say was behind the blast. And we have a new look at the damage left behind from that bombing in Nashville. See the widespread damage just ahead. Here's a live look over our East Memphis camera, high five camera. It's 44 degrees outside as 508 passes here on a Monday morning. We got warmer conditions ahead and it's dry. Details in 90 seconds. With all today's breaking news, WMC Action News 5 starts now. 
Shelby County School Board member and former judge Teresa Jones died this weekend after battling cancer. Jones served as a judge for the Memphis Municipal Court in Tennessee since January of 2019. Former judge Ernestine Hunt Dorse and friend of Teresa Jones had this to say about what made this woman so special. So she had so many passions in her life and that was what made her so great because if she did it, she was going to do it with everything that she had and she absolutely loved people. Memphis Mayor Jim Strickland shared a statement on the city's website saying in part, quote, Judge Jones applied her talent as a Shelby County School Board member, chief city prosecutor, trial attorney. Strickland went on to say, I had the opportunity earlier in the week, not knowing it would be my last, to express those exact feelings to her. My sincere condolences to her family and friends in their time of grief, end quote. And new overnight, police in Pittsburgh are investigating explosions in two neighborhoods. Investigators said the first blast happened around 9 last night. The second came an hour and a half later. Police said the devices were thrown from a vehicle and they're looking for the person responsible. Fortunately, no one was hurt in either blast. We're getting a new look at the damage caused by the Christmas morning bombing in Nashville. Check out this drone video here from above. This is downtown Nashville. Check it out. It really shows how much damage is still left in this area where the bomb went off. Crews remain busy at this hour working there, cleaning up. It's expected to take some time. No word yet on when the area could be reopened. Only the suspected bomber was killed in this blast. The FBI is still looking for motive into that bombing. Nashville nonprofits rallying to help hundreds of workers affected by the bombing. The city community center held a drive through event offering boxes of food and hygiene to people. That includes one worker from the Melting Pot restaurant who says the damage to the building was so severe she's not sure when she'll return to work. Add out like I'm going to take what I can get at this point so that we know that we're going to be okay for uh, at least a couple of weeks. 41 different businesses were in the blast zone. The Community Resource Center has also been collecting cleanup supplies like garbage bags and brooms for when workers are able to get back inside and start rebuilding. We're going to check on your Monday morning traffic commute in just a few moments with Janine Gordon. Right now, though, and check in with meteorologist Brittany Bryan to get the latest on our weather. And I have to say, it was such a joy. Yesterday's weather was wonderful. Now that we're at the start of a new year, it might be a good time to think about how to tackle your financial goals for 2021. Ryder Taft is a financial advisor in Mississippi. He says the new year is a great time to set some new and strong financial goals. He says it's important to practice money management, create a budget, and says people should be saving whenever they can. He also says there's help for people who are struggling financially. Take a close look and evaluate all of your debts. Um, there has been uh, moratoriums on evictions uh, from, from rental properties. So if you are renting and you are having a hard time making that payment, discuss with your landlord. Just tell them you can't make that payment. You don't have to share all of your financial details with them, but they would rather have you paying something than nothing. Um, similarly, we've had help for folks paying mortgages they can defer those payments so again talk with your mortgage servicer there the current federal moratorium on evictions has been extended till the end of the month well besides just better money management there's surely a list of things you hope to do differently this year but before the new you set your sights on the stars be sure you're not fighting off more than you can chew chris pelote has more if you're looking to get healthier in the new year, listen up. In my morning's Best Life Report, I've got details on some superfoods that can start you on the right track. But before we get to that, Shelby County hit some snags in its vaccination efforts. Our Camille Connor has how health leaders are adjusting just ahead. With all the day's breaking news, WMC Action News 5 at 5.30 starts now. Another challenge coming. Two Mid-South Senators joining an effort to challenge the 2020 election. What our political expert says about that attempt. 
And vaccines are being administered in Shelby County. What you need to know to get your COVID-19 vaccination coming up. Good Monday morning. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kim Clark in for Joy. I'm Andrew Douglas, Brittany Bryant, Janine Gordon. Have your first alert weather and traffic on this Monday morning. Let's begin with Brittany. It was so nice <laughs> to see the sun yesterday, wasn't it, Brittany? The Shelby County Health Department is preparing to continue distribution of the first round of vaccines this week. WMC Action News 5's Camille Connor has more on how the rollout seemed to improve over the weekend after hitting some early snags early on. Morning, Camille. All right, Camille. Well, the Whitehaven Community Living Center will begin vaccinating its residents and staff this week. The first vaccine clinic set for Wednesday with the Moderna vaccine. The president and CEO of the Living Center said, quote, our residents are at such a high risk for getting sick, being hospitalized or passing away from COVID-19. Our caregivers live in the community where the virus continues to spread. And yet, despite those circumstances, they continue to risk their lives caring for our most vulnerable. He went on to say, quote, this vaccine has been shown to provide a great deal of protection against the virus and will save lives, end quote. Later this week, the FDA will meet to consider giving half doses of Moderna's vaccine to lower the risk to individuals. Head of Operation Warp Speed says clinical data shows the vaccine can be just as effective at half doses in people ages 18 to 55. The U.S. vaccine chief says the move would make the vaccine available to twice as many people in that age group. It's unknown if this will also work with the Pfizer vaccine. To date, only 4 million Americans have received the first dose of two shots that are required. Vaccine rollout has begun. Who gets the shot depends on where you live. We have posted a detailed breakdown of the COVID vaccine priority list for all three Mid-South states. You can find that along with the latest coronavirus coverage on our website right now, WMCActionNews5.com. Click on the coronavirus tab at the top of our homepage. Well, the Mid-South's newest U.S. Senator was sworn into office, and he's already causing a stir on Capitol Hill. Tennessee Senator Bill Haggerty was sworn into his first term yesterday, replacing longtime Senator Lamar Alexander, who retired. Now... Haggerty and Tennessee's senior Senator Marsha Blackburn are adding to a controversy on Capitol Hill. Both senators joining some of their Republican colleagues to challenge the results of the presidential election when Congress meets to certify those results. In a joint statement, the senators claim the allegations of fraud and irregularities in the 2020 election exceed, quote, any in our lifetimes. But Courts across the country dismissed dozens of lawsuits after finding no evidence of fraud. WMC Action News 5's political analyst Mike Nelson said the challenge won't mean much in the end. They have lined themselves up entirely with President Trump against, honestly, all the tradition, all the law, all the facts in this case. But they intend to go forward. It'll end up with Biden being elected. It'll just take longer. Several GOP leaders have come out in opposition to this challenge to the election. President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris will take office January 20th. Supporters of President Trump held a march in Tennessee to voice their support. Women for America First held a rally in Franklin, Tennessee yesterday afternoon as a lead-up to a rally on Wednesday in Washington. Organizers say they want to pressure members of Congress to contest the Electoral College vote. Organizers are also thanking Tennessee Senators Marsha Blackburn and Bill Haggerty for contesting the Electoral College certification in states where, quote, we know voter fraud occurred. Democrats in Congress have contested the Electoral College certifications in past elections in 2016, 2004, and 2000. Looking ahead, Tennessee Governor Bill Lee has set a special session for education. The session will begin January 19th. Topics the governor wants to address include learning loss and teacher pay. Tennessee State Senator Ramesh Akberi represents Memphis, says she hopes the session will also focus on funding issues in public schools that predate the pandemic. More details are expected to be released later today. Well, we all promise to be healthier in the new year, but how can you actually do it? In my morning's Best Life Report, I've got what nutritionists say are the best foods we should all be eating. Plus, it's the new year, but last year's presents still not present. Uh -huh. See what I did there? There you go. Why USPS was forced to delay millions of packages. And more clouds rolling in this afternoon. I'll let you know when we'll go from mostly sunny to mostly cloudy today after the break. 
Well, Christmas has come and gone, but many Mid-Southerners may still be waiting for their packages to arrive. Mark Weber, owner of the Mail Center in Midtown Memphis, said the United States Postal Service faced an impossible challenge this year between the pandemic changing how it operates and a record online shopping season. More than two million packages a day were delayed. Weber said some of the packages they've shipped are behind as much as two to three weeks. He said part of the problem is that USPS can't say no. FedEx and UPS can actually limit their volume. Um, the post office cannot. So if somebody calls them up and says, we've got a thousand packages that we couldn't give to FedEx or UPS, they give them to the post office and they have to take them. Mark Weber said their peak day was December 14th. Usually it's the 19th. So people got their gifts in the mail earlier this year, but with a record 3 billion packages shipped this holiday season, the volume was simply overwhelming. A spokesperson for USPS Memphis said, quote, we will continue to work around the clock to deliver all packages and mail entered into our system. 51% of Americans made a New Year's resolution to eat healthier in 2021, but only 8% of people actually stuck to their goal. For those of you hoping to do better, We've got some superfoods that will help keep your diet supercharged in this new year. Coconut oil, chia seeds, quinoa, the list of fad superfoods come in and out of fashion over the last couple of years, and it goes on and on. But what exactly is classified as a superfood? Nutritionists say superfoods are a food that is extremely nutrient dense. For example, while celery has 1 to 2% of the nutrients that a person needs any given day, kale may have 50 to 100% of the nutrients in the same serving size. Some other superfoods, oily fish like salmon, trout, and sardines. They have high levels of omega-3. They can reduce inflammation and drop your risk for heart disease. Beans, peas, lentils, they boast high levels of fiber, iron, zinc, and vitamin B. And berries are loaded with antioxidants to fight off disease. Also, a study out of Harvard has found that blueberries may be able to slow cognitive decline by two and a half years. For a quick, healthy snack, look to walnuts. They're packed with iron, calcium, antioxidants, vitamin E, and a bunch of other nutrients, which can improve your memory and help you get a good night's rest by raising melatonin levels and reducing cholesterol levels. Keep those New Year's resolutions. They're hard, but with these superfoods, you'll be able to get to your best life faster. January is usually a busy time for gyms and fitness centers since New Year's resolutions are just starting up. But with the pandemic still posing problems for many areas across the country, some business owners are worried it will affect what's normally a big start to the new year. Gym owners said they usually see a spike in business and profit during the months of January, February and March from people making resolutions to get healthy. But gyms are among the businesses with imposed restrictions, either reduced hours or reduced capacity, if not both. This has some gym owners worried about how the new year will roll out without the bumps in business. I think that what this year has shown us is, um, you know, being healthy is super important. You know, for our gym and a lot of gyms like ours, like people are being down the door ready to get back in the gym. In Shelby County, gyms and fitness centers are limited to 50% capacity and masks must be worn inside. Well, we're learning about new additions coming to Memphis International Airport's Concourse B. According to the Memphis Business Journal, new restaurants will come in three phases as part of a 17-year agreement with Anton Food. The first phase will include Memphis-made brewing, casual dining, and a Grizzlies-branded restaurant. Additions in phase two include Chick-fil-A and Chili's. The Concourse B modernization project costs more than $200 million and is expected to be finished by the middle of this year. All right, 548 is the time of the Monday. We want to check in with meteorologist Brittany Bryan and traffic tracker Janine Gordon with our first alert weather and traffic. And let's begin with Brittany, who's got some great news this morning. Morning, Brittany. Last night at FedEx Forum, the matchup brought Grizzlies great Marc Gasol back to the Bluff City for the first time in a different uniform there. Unfortunately, no fans were there to greet him as COVID has put a pause on attendance at any NBA game. The Grizzlies did not get off to a hot start, but the bench came up big in the first quarter. Grizzlies actually led this game by 11 going into the second quarter, but the scoring stalled, scoring rather, stalled there. 
Grizzlies put up just 18 points to the Lakers 31 in quarter two. Grizzlies were able to keep it close going into the fourth quarter, but the Lakers pulled away at the end. Final score 108-94. Here's head coach Taylor Jenkins. Thoughts on the loss? We had good moments where we made great plays, just missed some shots, and then, you know, the pressure kind of, you know, forced us into some rush plays as well. Um, but for the most part, really proud of, you know, guys just stepping up, you know, ready to step in. You know, it was great to see X uh, first game of the season. I thought he gave us some uh, great contributions, um, but that's how we're built. Well, we got like half the roster injured, don't we? I mean, there's so many guys injured, including John Moran. The Grizzlies get a second go at the Lakers. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, go Grizzlies. Tennessee Titans are kings of the AFC South for the first time since 2008. The title didn't come without some last-minute stress for fans. Titans nearly lost their final game of the regular season here to the 4-11 Texans. With the score tied at 38 seconds, or 38 rather, just 17 seconds left, QB Ryan Tannehill connects with A.J. Brown there for a huge game to get the ball to the 23-yard line. Leaving it all up to kicker Sam Sloman. Check out this kick, though. Drama goes right to the end. It doinks. The post goes in. Titans win the AFC South. They'll face the Baltimore Ravens in the AFC wild card game next week. So here's how the full playoff picture looks right now. Kansas City Chiefs, Green Bay Packers. They have secured the two buys next Saturday. Playoffs kick off with Buffalo facing the Colts. Rams facing the Seahawks. Tampa faces Washington. And then on Sunday, the Bears will play the Saints. Titans play the Ravens. The Browns will play the Steelers. Sunday Night Football right here on WMC Action News 5. In our next hour, Tennessee teachers are getting bumped forward for vaccinations. We'll update you on when they can get their shots. And a leaked call shows President Trump begging for the election to be overturned. Hear the audio yourself ahead at 6.